What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Falcons in Focus podcast. I'm Scott Bear. That's Tori McElhaney. Mike Ford. Our feature <laughs> introduced himself. Mike he was Ford. ready. Uh, we've done 17 of those. That's a first. I know. That's, that's, Congrats, uh, man. Okay. You introduced yourself. He is Falcons defensive back, special teams extraordinaire, tone setter, plays like yeah. his hair is constantly on fire, mm-hmm. and uh, unofficial hype man for the Mercedes-Benz Stadium crowd because when the man's done with – kickoff coverage he is like in the crowd be like you stand up you stand up you stand up (laughs) i mean you get about as pumped as anyone i've covered this league a long time you love playing football oh yeah i love the game it's a it's a passion of mine i'm pretty sure what we're about to have this interview is is going to pretty much it's going to tell on into what why my passion is so strong you know so uh my dad is pretty much my passion behind all of it and then plus like you said, on kickoff, I'm going down on kickoff. The next group to go out there is the defense. Why not give those guys energy? And, you know, we want the other quarterback not to be able to hear. So yeah. that's my goal is to get it going. And that's what fans can see on the field. But what we see around the facility is Mike has fun with everything. Yeah. And I want to bring up something kind of random to start this. We we were in Washington State mm-hmm. for like a week And I think it was on a Tuesday where a bunch of y'all went out to like a military base. Mm -hmm. And there are photos of Mike Ford having the time of his life. (laughs) He's he's putting on face paint. He's shooting machine guns. He's throwing grenades. And (laughs) apparently Avery Williams said collecting pins. Yeah. I mean, what? Oh, yeah. Patches. He's he's talking about patches. patches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had Avery on the podcast and he was like, yeah, somehow, some way we look over and Mike has all of these patches just like (laughs) that he's taken from people. We don't know how that happened. (laughs) Was that a real, like, kid in the candy store sort of moment for you? Oh, yeah, So I was – it's definitely a kid in the candy store. Like I said, my dad is pretty much – he's – like, that's like my life. I'm not going to lie. So um, he was in the Army, you know. So just, like, getting to be around those guys, you know, I'm – I like guns as well. So just seeing, like, those guys and what they do and actually being up in front in person, I was like, man, I know it takes, like, some work to earn those patches. So I was like, let's let's see what happens if I ask one of them for it. So literally it was just kind of one of those things where first person I seen, I was like, man, I really like that patch. Like, can I have it? And he took it off the hand and said, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to collect all different ones. So I seen a different one. I asked the next guy. And it just kept going. As they asked me for autographs, I asked them for their patch, and we just traded off. Man, I love it. And also, did you get to sit in a helicopter or was it a helicopter or was it a a fighter jet? Uh, I want to say it was one of the fighter jets. Avery was in the front. I was in the back. And, like, they were just showing us, like, all the – the tools and how everything works inside of the plane. It was pretty cool. So, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I experienced everything. Right. Yeah. It's like everything that y'all have to do. Everything they had. Literally, they had the plane. They had whatever they had. I I got into it. So, (laughs) yeah. So, it was just, it was really interesting. I'd love to do a lot of, I'd do it again. I'd love to do it again. Yeah. That's awesome. Is that kind of like your nature, just like wanting to experience and do kind of different stuff? Is that how you are, like away from the field, a bunch oh, yeah, of different yeah. passions, yeah, things I'm, like that? I'm, I'm definitely a guy that wants to try new things. Like mm-hmm. I've always been that way. Like if we, like when I was a ki- kid, if I seen a guy out there doing a backflip, I'm like, all right, well, let me try. How do you do it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's just always how I've been. I always, you know, one of those people that's like, if you can do it, I can do it. Mm-hmm. So like it was just, it's like kind of one of those things, you know, so. It's just something that I've always been into, me as a person, something that I've always loved to do is, you know, try new things. So it just comes naturally. Yeah, and it's – I think for as much of the of, of the of the fun-loving kind of parts like that we're talking about, I saw an Instagram post from 493 weeks ago, I think. Or exactly. 40, I don't know, a long time. And it was basically like – it showed a picture of people like dancing in a club, and it said, y'all want to do this – and then it showed a picture of the NFL draft stage, and it said, I want to do this. Yeah. And you're a guy from southeast Missouri State who is an established NFL veteran yep. doing it the right way. Yes, sir. The journey, right, you know, like we're all having fun here, but sometimes, right, it's about work to get to where you oh, yeah. are. And to be where you are now after all of the hard work, undrafted guy, earned your way, is there some gratification for how you did it and the way that you worked at it? I give all my thanks to God, man. Like, I mean, that's who that's who I thank. You know, I've always had the mindset that I was going to be here, but without God, it wouldn't be possible. Without my dad, that's mm-hmm. like I said, everything is pretty much going to go back to him. I feel like that's my angel. There's been situations I've been in where I just know that it was him putting his hand on me. So I just feel like, you know, yes, it takes 
hard work. You know, it's not been easy. This road has not been easy. But like you said, 400 some weeks ago, that's yeah. that was my goal, and I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna accept anything else. Yeah. To to that end, I mean, when you kind of think back and. I, one of my favorite things is to talk to people who did go to smaller schools and, and trying to get on the radar of some of these scouts that are, you know, going to these big schools. I mean, do you have a story of kind of a moment where you're like, hey, I'm getting on these people's radar and I'm I'm going to be there one day? OK, so it's crazy because like coming in as a freshman at CMO, like I was I was a, another guy, you know, but then we started doing like summer workouts and I stood out and like a lot of guys were like, man, like you're a little different you know so like we do the little drills I compete and it was like we did it all throughout the summer I want to say I lost one rep and I was a I was a red shirt freshman at this time and like we I tested off the charts I had a lot of older guys they were my friends and they were like Mike like you got a chance dude like how athletic you are like you have a chance just put this together like put it together on the field like you have a chance and my um, red shirt sophomore year, I come out there and I led the conference with interceptions. Mm-hmm. And, like, from that moment on, I was, like, just having those guys around me, my friends and that support and them telling me that I could do it. It was, like, once I did that and I made all conference, I was, like, man, I just need a chance to get in the door. I need, I just need a team to come to my pro day. Mm-hmm. Hey, it went from, you know, I put the film out there. Now it's come see me. That's mm-hmm. all I need is you to come see me. Because, like they would say, I was like, I know I'm athletic enough to get right. inside of this building. Mm-hmm. Once I get there, like, my work will say stand for itself. Mm-hmm. So that was my goal. And I'd say after my redshirt sophomore year, but I'd say I wear the guy's shirt. I wore it today, actually. Mm-hmm. His name is Ryan Moore. And that's my guy, man. That's, like, my best friend. He's a roommate of mine. He's actually one of my trainers that I train with. And that was the guy that would always tell me, like, Mike, you're athletic enough. Just keep mm-hmm. going. Just keep going. He was my starting corner next to me that year, too, so. You know, that wow. guy, he helped me get the mindset going back because I, after my freshman year of college, I almost. Were you kind of thinking yeah, about Yeah, I, I was like, oh, uh, is, is this it? Yeah. You know, so he helped me keep my head on, he keep my head on, keep everything straightforward. So, you know, I give a lot of thanks to him, and that's one of my best friends to this day. And wow. then, like, once you get here, that's hard. Staying here is harder. Right, yeah. And oh, yeah. you have found a way to stay in there, both on defense and special teams, and oh, yeah, just, yeah. just being – good being steady right yep. i mean like once you get here then like how do you stay here like what's your mindset uh, going through because so, i mean like where are you what you're five now yeah five yeah <laughs> so funny story man uh coming in like i said i was undrafted i want to say my signing bonus was like seven thousand dollars so i got like five wow. i got like yeah. five yeah. after that you know i didn't have a place to live none of that so you know i was really like i gotta work like i, I gotta go to work like if they cut me next week i'm I'm not going to have anything, you yeah. know? So it's like I just went in there work. Funny story, man. My um, my my rookie year, I walked to work the whole preseason. You did, did you not? really? Yeah. How long of, of a walk was that? Uh, I stayed I stayed literally, I want to say it was two minutes. So they have the, the Lions facility right here, and they have an apartment complex, like literally a block. It's a stoplight right there, and that's where the apartment complex mm-hmm. is. I lived right there. And like you say, what helped me get here is Mm -hmm. I prided myself in I was going to be the first person there. I was going to be the last person to leave. Part of that was because I didn't want anybody to see me walking. (laughs) So so I'm going to be the first person there because nobody, these are NFL players. Nobody's going to see me walking to work. Nobody's going to see me walking (laughs) to work. So I prided myself being the first person there. And then, funny story, we're playing Chuck Washington this week. He was a guy that was a special teams guy that, you know, he taught me a lot. Um. And he used to just, like, stick around in the building. He'd just be there. So then it became a competition for me. Like, yeah. I'm very competitive. It's like I'd see him there. All right, well, what what else can I do while he's here? Mm-hmm. And we would just compete, and I'd just stick around. i stick around because I knew he was a teamer's guy. And I mean, that's ultimately my competition. Right. Mm-hmm. So my rookie year, I mean, I just pride myself being the first guy there, being the last guy to leave. Anytime somebody wanted to take a playoff, I – Ran out on the field, whether it was with the ones, twos, whatever, the coach would have, Mike, no, 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 we got this guy. So I just tried to steal every rep I could. I tried to make a play. Like, that was my actual goal that I had with myself was make a play every day. That way they can't get rid of you. Because if they see you on film every day, how can they let you go if it's something good? And that was just my goal, man, be the first one there, last one to leave, make a play a day. And, I mean, so far that's been my, that's how I take the approach. Every day I come out here on this field. 
and I'm still here. So and wow. still here. And, and you'd kind of mentioned that that you have your angel, right? That we're sitting here talking to Mike Ford Jr. Yeah. Let's talk mm-hmm. a, a little bit about Mike Ford Sr. Mm-hmm. Um, just for those who don't know, um, your father passed when you were about six months old yep, in a true. in a single car accident. Yep. Correct. Yep. Um, and I, I guess Tori and I kind of kept kind of talking about this. And when you're that young, we kind of thought, like, how do you learn about your dad? How do you find out about all the good things that he did? And we've read, and there are a lot of good things, yeah. right? Yeah. How do like how do you go about finding out about those things? Well, like my my dad, he um he was very diverse with his friends, I would say. So like he everybody in the city, um, pretty much knew him. You know, um, like you said, it's when you're kind of a crazier guy on the field it's easy to point that guy out he was one of those guys on the sideline kind of like me riled up he'd bang his head on the bench he was like one of those guys so everybody knew him he was a nice guy he'd do anything for anybody so it's just his character was you know self-explanatory when mm-hmm. when you talk about him everybody wants to talk about him so it was it wasn't much for me to growing up you know my god dad was my dad's best friend. So yeah. it didn't take much for me, you know, pop a question here and there, pop a question. And everybody wanted to tell me like, man, your dad was this way, your dad was this way. So everybody just feed me stories because of who he was as a person. Right. They wanted me to know, you know, who he was. So everybody just tell me all these stories. And then it wasn't until like I did in the last interview until I was 10 mm-hmm. when I finally got to meet my dad's mom and my grandma yeah. and all of them. And then that's when it like really like I don't, I took a deep dive into like who he really was, man. I got to read like his letters from the army. I just got to really understand who he was, see all his trophies, see everything he he pretty much accomplished, and that's when I really like, I really understood who he was. Yeah, because he, I'm, I'm sorry, Tori. He, he he was a high school football player, a pretty good one. He was in the army. Yep. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. So I mean, he had accomplished a lot yep. early on. Yep. When you kind of are in this process of, of kind of finding out about who who this person was, not just, like, to people around you, but th- how he could impact your life. I mean, do you have a story that kind of – that you heard over the years where you were like, that kind of epitomizes who I believe he was? Uh, I would just say, man, like, a lot of the stories, it's just crazy because they're all, like – like, I mean, it's, it's just, like, a lot of good stories mm-hmm. about him. Like, for example, like, somebody do something wrong to him. Like, for example, my, my dad, he was a big collector in coins. So he collected, mm-hmm. like, half dollars, dollar coins. He collected quarters. He'd have them all, like, in binders and stuff. Oh, yeah. I used to, when I was a kid, I collected yeah. uh, state quarters. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, like, yeah. anytime there was a state quarter, I would collect yeah, yeah. it. And I, I remember those little binders that yeah, you, yeah. Would, you would slot them in. I, I know exactly what you're so, talking about. So, yeah, he used to do that. And then – um my mom's brother, I guess the story, my mom's brother, uh, one day he had a lot of like quarters and stuff in his car and my mom's brother, like my uncle, he stole it from him, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. And except for getting mad, like the story is like my dad really just looked at him. He's like, dude, if you needed a couple bucks, like I would have gave it to you and he pulls out like a $20. He's like, here though, you can have this, wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it was just like, that just shows his character. Like, man, it, it's never about, like, he doesn't, it's not about material things, man. It's more so about, you know, a respect thing. You know, I'll do anything for you. And that's something that I live by. Like, you can ask a lot of guys in the locker room, like, they know I'll do anything for them. When they're down, I'm right there for them to pick them up. Like, it's just, it's just you over me type of mindset. Yeah. You know, I put I, somebody else first. Yeah. And I probably should have asked you this before we were on camera, but can we see your right forearm? Can you see the tattoo? Uh, it's it's pretty much oh, my whole oh, one. Oh, okay, well well then well then just kind of um, I can show you. describe it to us. I'll show you. You want me to show you or no? Sure. Why <laughs> not? <laughs> what the? <laughs> what the heck? No? Why not? Is that good on camera? Well, no? I mean, no, no. why don't like why don't okay. you just uh, okay, so, describe it to us and maybe so we well, can add some photos later on. Basically, I have like on the top of my arm is mm-hmm. pretty much his football number, number forty-two. Okay. Um, it has his name above it. His numbers are in red because he went to. Alden Redbirds. Okay. That was his logo, his number, school, so his colors. I have dog tags because he was in the Army. Mm-hmm. One has the year he was born. The other has the year he died. Um, there's a flag coming down for, like, his American flag mm-hmm. thing because he was in the Army. Um, I have an eye back there, which everybody jokes like you're looking at me. But, like, no, it's like, <laughs> it's like my dad pretty much symbolizing that he's always watching over me. He's always looking out for me. 
Um, I have two clocks with stairs going up there. One is the, the day he died and the day he was born. And the inside I have thou shalt honor thy mother, thy father. Mm -hmm. uh, family first on my wrist, which is a matching tattoo with my brother. My mom's name, I kind of have like a dead tree in a way. Mm -hmm. And I chose to do that because like my foundation, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a, we didn't come from much, you know, we didn't have much, but we, we made use of what, what we had. So, I mean, it's a dead tree, but it's living and it's holding up pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say so, you know, Man. I'd say that's like our foundation. And then I got this big shark in the middle because that's me. I'm willing to mm -hmm. attack for mine. So. And always and swimming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep swimming, you Just know, keep swimming. As, as our good friend Dory once said. Now, it, it's funny, too, because you're talking about uh, just kind of how your story just connects and everything. Y you talk about you know, not coming from much. Well, you, you get into the league and you are able to buy your mom a house. And yeah. that is. I can't wait to talk about that. So I, I watched, the, we watched the video uh, that you had put on Instagram. And it got it, me, man. It was, first of all, it was funny because my favorite part was you running through the house and you're in the garage and you're kind of just like peeking underneath when, when she does pull up. But please tell us a little bit about what, like that day and, and kind of what that day was like for you. Uh, I would say that was, that was like a life goal being accomplished that day mm. um yeah because from the moment the moment that i picked up a football i told my mom my fault no you're good no worries man um yeah from the moment that i picked up a football i told my mom that i'd get her a house because like growing up me and my brother shared a room until i was like 15, 16, and my little sister stayed in the room with my, my mom and my stepdad, so we ain't have shit, bro. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But no, that's fine. No. We ain't have nothing, man. Uh, I don't want to embarrass myself, but yeah, like, we ain't have much, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, we made it look like we had a lot, but we ain't had nothing. So, that was my promise from the moment that I picked up football, was like, I'm going to get you a house. And like I saved up, I saved up damn near everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I went undrafted. I bought it after what my third, third or fourth year. Mm -hmm. So I ain't have nothing. I ain't mm -hmm. have much. I just uh, so I took it. And I, I, my brother, he was, he's he's smart as hell. He uh he had got a job in Houston, and that's a place that like I really wanted to live. And mm -hmm. my mom, and, like my family, we're at, we're all we got, bro. So. My mom was just getting really upset about my brother being so far away from home. And, like, I had a chance. I took it. So I, I bought her a house. I had enough to get her a house. I got her a house. Uh, surprised her. I act as if, because it was around my sister's birthday, I acted as if we were going to Galveston Beach for, like, her birthday or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when we got done with that, uh, drove, I had them drive out to the house and I told him that we we're going to meet at like the turkey hut factory or whatever, the turkey leg factory or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll get some food because like that's a big deal in Houston. Yeah. yeah. And I they were the so excited leg. and my brother, he was like playing along with, he's like, man, we're late. Mike's already got the table. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so my mom's like going crazy on the phone. So then they finally pull up and I open the garage and I'm like, welcome home. Da, da, da. And my mom's like, what? Like you probably seen the video. Yeah. That's like the Nick, Nick Young. What? <laughs> so like, so yeah, and then I'm like, this is your house. She's like, no, no, it's not. I'm like, no, here's your key. This is your house. And she went in there, she cried. And, I mean, <laughs> it's just it's just a life goal accomplished. So. Yeah, she was she was so cute too, because yeah. she was like, I can't believe you're recording me right yeah, now. Yeah, she didn't <laughs> want to be recorded. Like <laughs> she did not like like one thing about her, she does not want you to record her when she's crying. Yeah. At all. Like whether it's a good time or not. Like, <laughs> Oh man, that's such a s special story, and I mean, sorry, I got teary. No, but, no, uh, never apologize for that. I, I'm kind of missing. I kind of did too, to be honest. With you. <laughs> but no, it's it's it, so. To, it's just so. It's just such a good story, and I'm I'm emotional about it too. But like, when you're going through that process of like finding your mom a house, like. I know how partic particular I am about like the things in in life, like a like a house. It's like, oh, I want to make sure that this is exactly how she would like it, you know. 
how did you go about that process? Because I feel like it, it would be really difficult to kind of be like looking for a house for somebody else, not just yourself, but for somebody else to kind of be like, congrats, this is yours. <laughs> do, you yeah, know, yeah. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. like I'm not like how did sense. I how did I pick that house yeah. to know that it was something that, that was she for bought. her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, during the process, it was pretty much like it was like a trick. So I was more so like going about it that as if. Like, I was buying this house for me. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know? So I went on, and I was, like, showing her, like, I had, like, four or five houses. I was just like, you know, what do you think about these houses? Uh. Da, da, da. And I was like, how do you, like, you know what I'm saying? She's like, I always thought when you got your house, like, you get a bigger one, da, da, da mm. bigger one than this one, all that, da, da, da. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I just want to make sure that, like, if anything happens, you all can come stay with me and stuff like that. So she's looking at it. And, like, there's one house that she really loved. And she's like, man, I really like this house for you, da, da, da crazy like my house that i have for myself now it's kind of like the similar layout oh, but, is it? <laughs> but yeah <laughs> so then i um i seen one and like i was like you know what out of all like it was not it wasn't the house that i had already shown her uh-huh. but it had like all the same things so i was like you know i really like this one i feel like this is the best one you know so i was like you know i'm gonna take a chance i'm gonna go get it yeah and like my brother was in houston and i was like what do you think go check the house out he went and checked it out and everything and from there, it was just kind of like, like I told you, we don't come from much. So, like, mm-hmm. what, like she, she can't, she she's not gonna, whatever, yeah, she's yeah. not going to expect that. Yeah. So, you know, it was just more so finding some stuff that I felt a big enough house for everybody to be able to come back to if right. necessary. And then just something that I feel like she would love. And, like, when I say, like, she loves the house, like, it's like she she never wants to leave Houston. Like, yeah, that's her place now. So. Oh, that's so great. Now, were you had you already bought a house before you bought her house, or oh, no, 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 you no. bought her house? Yeah, I first. bought her house first. That's that cool. is freaking that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, I bought hers first. I bought hers what two years ago, and I got mine like at the beginning of this year. Gotcha. So, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. I mean, some of the stuff that she said on this video, and I'm not trying to get all emotional with the thing again but i she said i can't believe this day has come this is the best day of my life i was like oh my gosh like like that's the kind of impact like that you want to have and i know she had a huge impact on you growing up Mm -hmm. um and specifically i read i think in the detroit news wrote a good story about you and said that um she saw you f- having fun at like a family reunion playing football or something like that and then <laughs> yeah, and then she signed you up like can you remember oh, that yeah. day oh, at yeah. all really oh, yeah, i remember it yeah so i can tell you the people that were there and everything. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. i mean like it set up this moment right yeah, yeah. right so, exactly um, yeah it was it was a park back home it's called salute park it's pretty much like in the summer we have like a like a back to school event that they do really well in the city and they hand out like school supplies, they play basketball, like everybody's out there just having a good time. Mm-hmm. Like that's pretty much what our city does during that time. So it was one of those days, you know, and then we were out there, we had like a family reunion or whatever. So of course some people from the, the city came out, mm-hmm. hang out with us. Like, you know, the city's pretty small, so we just hang out. So had a couple people out there and I'll never forget like my, my brother's dad, rest in peace to him. Uh, he was he was the one that actually like we did like a little draft and he picked me on his team and it was just like one play I never forget it I did like a little flat route swing he threw me the ball and my uncle his name Luke Hardeman I, I'm telling you I know it like on point yeah <laughs> he knows I was exactly. running I was running to the sideline he came out there I juked him really well <laughs> boom and like when I said we're playing with like these guys are probably like 20 years old I'm oh, like wow. 10 years okay, old so okay. I'm out there like playing with older people so I juke him and like I'm. I ended up getting a good amount of yards, and, like, everybody's going crazy. Like, oh, <laughs> like I'm the 10-year-old out yeah, there. You know? right. So everybody's like, oh, you just got juked by a 10-year-old. <laughs> so then next thing I know, my mom signs me up for football. I go out there. It's crazy. Uh, I go out there the first year I play, right? I am a nose tackle. That's my position. Wait, really? A nose tackle. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's funny. It's funny. So I'm a nose tackle. But mind you, all of the practices, I'm the fastest kid there. I get done first, so it made no sense. Right. It's like so. It did. It. It's so like then, like, I was having like fun with it. Yeah, I was of course. Really enjoying it, but my mom was like, "He's not using you right, so we're not going to play football this year." Your mom what? said that. So like, I, <laughs> I didn't play football. Like I played like half that season, and I didn't come back and play. 
So then the next year, like, my mom came up to the same coach. He's like, you're going to play my son the right way. I come out here, watch him every day run. He's the fastest person on the team. Give him the ball. Uh -huh. Good for her. So wow. Then, wow. So then I come out there the next year, and, like, I always played with older kids. I was yeah. playing yeah. with the older kids. So I was, like, the backup running back. But, like, that year I scored, like, four or five touchdowns. Mm. So then – I was like, all right, I'm pretty good at this. I'm playing with older kids. I'm scoring touchdowns. So then uh, the year after that, I come back. And I play for the same coach, but I, I'm with my age group. I end up, like, making the front page of our newspaper and all of this stuff, da, da, da. Long story short, they've retired my jersey this year for what? that little oh, wow. league for that little league team. So, oh, my goodness. That's so, that yeah, so, like, it was, like, my first experience with football, I had to quit. Because <laughs> so like, ah. your mom knew they weren't using you the right way. Yeah. That is so And she obviously knew what she was talking about. She did know what she was talking about. Yeah. Because, I mean, it worked out for yeah, you. Yeah, I went. Yeah. I mean, I ended up going to college to play running back. So. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true, right? You know, so, I mean, give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a smart thing. Do you still have the front page of that newspaper oh, yeah. somewhere? I have it. I have it in. So, like, my grandma, because I met her pretty much when I started playing football. Mm. Um she created me, like, these booklets and stuff that has, like, all the newspaper articles I've been in. Like, I have pretty much all my articles and mm -hmm. stuff like that because she keeps up with them. She'll get the news, cut them out, da, da, da. So I have, like, pretty much all of them. And, yeah, I have, I have that one. Literally, I have that pe that newspaper. I have one in my scrapbook. I have one that's an original copy. And then I have one at my mom's house. So yeah. I have, like... <laughs> Three of them. Yeah, you have all awesome. your bases covered. Yeah, it's yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. that's so great. Yeah, and there, there's a. It's a on top of your Twitter profile. I, I think it's it's like a it's like a family photo of you, your your mom, your brother, and your brother's dad, right? Yeah. And uh, Mike looks exactly the <laughs> same. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like I looked, I was like, was it, he just got bigger? But he looks <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The it's same. like you just went like this. <laughs> yep. Stretched yep. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, talk could, if you could. You were talking about. Um, your brother's dad, your your stepdad, I, I assume. Uh, what was he? No, that's my dad. Yeah, my exactly. father. Your, 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 your dad. Yeah, yeah. one hundred. What yeah. was he? How influential was he in your life growing up? Like I said, I mean, he picked me on this team at the park. I yeah. mean, yeah, he gave you <laughs> and your he's start pretty too. much the reason that I started playing football. You know, um, he played running back growing up, so that was kind of like oh, his nice. transition to me is to teach me how to play running back. But yeah, that like I said, like um. That's not that's not my dad. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. like I got a father and I got a dad. Mm. That's how I that's how I view it. You know, the dad is that's the that's the person who took care of me. That's, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and my father is who who gave me life. Mm. So, you know, um, yeah, he pretty much he pretty much is everything. The reason why I'm mm -hmm. playing, like I said, he played running back. He taught me everything mm -hmm. he knew. He brought me to practice every day. He made sure I was there, made sure I had the right equipment. Like he just he just made sure that I had everything I needed to be successful in mm. football. Um, raised me all my life. So, mm -hmm. like I said, man, that's like big ups to him, man. Mm -hmm. he, he's he made me who I am. And he, I think this year was the first time you've ever hosted a youth football camp, oh, right? Yeah. And <laughs> and if one that seems super awesome and fun because the kids look like they were having a blast. Oh, yeah, yeah. But think about everything else that we've talked about. Kind of full so circle. far, right? Yeah. It's a full circle thing. You didn't have a lot. Now you're in a position to give back to your family, to give back to kids. I don't know if you had it back in your hometown or like where you had yeah, back it. Back home. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it, like so with everything that we've talked about and where you come from and what you're about, that day must have been so cool. Oh man, like it's crazy cuz like I try and hold my emotions in a lot, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as far as tears and stuff. But, like, I was giving a speech, man. I had to cut my speech in the <laughs> middle. Like, hey, one of, you, one of my guys that have been here, like, give a speech and tell them about football, you know. Because yeah. you just start getting emotional, seeing all these little kids and just wondering, like, man, what if one day one of these kids are me? Like, mm -hmm. what if they end up yeah. where I am? And, like, I could be able to say, man, I, I played a part in that, you know. So I just – I got emotional, man. It's just seeing those kids there. And for me, it's more so, you know, each one teach one. That's something mm -hmm. that I've posted on my page multiple times. That's something that I pride myself in is, you know, others before yourself. Because, I mean, we're nothing. Like, one man can't do nothing by itself. Mm -hmm. We got to be together. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Man, I feel very inspired. And I, I, I thank you for kind of opening up and sharing everything with us. I mean, this has been very uh, 
heartwarming for for uh, for I uh, speaking for myself. I feel like I could speak for you too. Yeah, and it, and it kind of makes sense, right? We right. We know this positive guy who loves every right. moment, and here's the backstory, you mm-hmm. know, and the reason why, and why you're so energetic on the football field, right? You you always tap your right arm. Yep, yep. Right. I tap my I tap my right arm up here. I haven't got my black heart yet, but my dad, my brother's dad, name was Black, so I'm gonna get mm-hmm. a black heart right ah. here. But like before every game, I act as if it's there because I haven't had time to do it. But I tap mm-hmm. up here. I kiss up to my father. Mm-hmm. Tap my wrist. Kiss up to my dad. Mm-hmm. I jump up and scream and let it go. <laughs> and then it's and then it's time to play football, so man. Uh, now we're moving on to. I don't know. Is it our favorite part? It I, is our favorite I f- part. I feel like of the it probably is. It's it's a rapid fire mm-hmm. right, let's section. Go. Everybody oh, gets game. the same question. Yeah. Let's I see how I haven't watched the show, so I don't know. Okay. No, All right. good, 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 good. Then you then We don't want you to prep. This is authentic. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, All right. Um number one, your favorite play of your career. My favorite play of my career has to be my first special team play. Um oh. I went down at Gunner. Uh, and I downed the ball on a two yard line against the Carolina Panthers. Nice. So yeah, that's probably that's probably my favorite play because it's my introduction. So. There you go. That's a good one. <sighs> yeah, that's I like a really it. good one because you yeah. you think maybe you know a you know a crazy interception in college you know like something like like right. that but like that's a good one like special teams at the two it's kind of how you've kind of made your name and yeah. you're a good defender obviously but yeah. I mean there's so much that yeah, goes yeah. into that. Mm-hmm. Um, TV show that you are either one of your favorite TV shows or a TV show that you're binging right now. Scooby Dooby Doo. <gasps> Scooby Doo. Where are you? <laughs> Oh That's my, my favorite. Gosh. Is it oh really? My. Oh yeah. Is it like the animated one or oh the yeah, new the, one? No, the animated the one. Old the animated old one. Yes. Yep. yep. Oh my That's gosh. my favorite. That's I my favorite. I freaking love that. I'm a big Scooby Doo yep. girl. Yep. Uh, I used to watch like Cartoon Network, like growing Facts. up. Like, see, oh. mine was yeah. Scooby Doo, and my god sisters was SpongeBob. So. Nice. Oh, I see. I mean, yeah. 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 Velma Kin- was my kindred yep, spirit. Yeah. That was my girl back then. Velma yeah. guy. <laughs> 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 exactly. Um. Okay. Uh. Next one. What is your favorite game day? fit of the 2022 season game day fit mm-hmm. you're saying like one of your arrival fits outfits because mm-hmm. is, is this a real question yeah it is <laughs> i i want to know the, the joker mask right is it the joker yeah. mask because we were curious we were looking yeah. at it today we and it's it. scared oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i wasn't <laughs> there alive and i'm like that's gonna haunt my night oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. definitely the joker mask. okay yeah. i'm glad because that was the one that uh we looked at quite frequently because he was like I like that one yeah yeah it was funny too because when I do a a show for Fox 5 called Rise Up Tonight and we always do like a a Falcons Fits segment and kind of all of y'all's outfits and everything. You've been on there a few times, so okay. congratulations. But that one was, she was like, who is that? And I was like, it's it's Mike. I was yeah, like, yeah. Mike has the, the mask on. <laughs> and she's like, okay, I need to make sure because we need to say who it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the thing that's going to stick with you is that when you get into the dark, the eyes yeah. glow in the dark. Find, like, find a photo of this. It, or, or maybe don't um, if you want to sleep scary. at night. <laughs> uh, let's see. Which Falcon do you hang out with the most? Oh, I hang out with. D'Angelo Malone, that's my guy. <laughs> yeah. That is my guy. Like he's he's funny as hell, you know. <laughs> he keeps me laughing. He is an energy guy. You know, he's always positive. Like that's that's just my guy, man. I love I I mean I love that guy. Love so it. That's my guy. Cool. Yeah. Um, last question. What is your biggest pet peeve? I said this on the last interview. I um I really just don't like negative people that's negative, what grady said that negative, was a good one negative yeah. energy like i'm i'm the type of person like if we're sitting here and somebody starts to get too negative like mike's gonna disappear mm, yeah. Like, yeah mike yeah. The, i don't really want to be hang around with that. negative stuff yeah, yeah. It, that's so. a good one because scott and i were talking he's like he's such a positive person he may not have a pet peeve and yeah. i was like or it could be one of those things that there's just just the one thing yeah, that nice. just completely Literally turns just it off that like negative like my mom can get negative. Anybody that's negative, I'm like, I will ghost. I will just <laughs> right. get away. <laughs> Irish Disappear. goodbye. Smoke bomb and yep, you're out of boom. there. <laughs> right. and I, like, I, if I try and make you positive and it doesn't work, then yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Good night now. Oh, well, man. wow. This is why we do this podcast. Absolutely. Exactly yeah. right mm-hmm. here. I came in knowing a, a little bit about mm-hmm. Mike Ford. I feel like we're friends now. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fascinating story. Thank you so much for sharing it. And Mm -hmm. thanks to everybody for downloading and listening. Please, 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 with Sugar on Top, rate, review, subscribe to the Falcons Podcast Network. We're coming up to the end of the season here. One more episode left. And please be sure to join us for another great guest next week. See ya.